Welcome back. Today we're going to open up the good old Hornaday reloading manual. We're going to look at what I believe is a really underrated 33 caliber hunting cartridge. And we're all familiar with the 338 Win Mag and how well it does. And of course, there's the famous 338 Lapua Mag. Today we're going to look at a Weatherby. We are going to go over the 340 Weatherby. So stay tuned. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right. I've got this trusty little 308 as my bookmark for the 340 Weatherby mag. Okay. Well, let's just look at a comparison. Quite a big difference. Anyway, in 1963, Roy Weatherby introduced the 340 Weatherby Magnum. It wasn't one of the original cartridges that Roy introduced. However, it is based off the 300 Weatherby Magnum, which is the most popular Weatherby cartridge. So it's the same casing, just necked up to 33 caliber. And yes, it is a 33 caliber bullet. Uh, I think Weatherby wanted to kind of one up the 338 Win Mag, and so they said 340 Weatherby. So let's go ahead and look at how well this cartridge does with that 300 Weatherby case. Just looking at a 200 grain bullet, he's going 3,200 feet per second, which is quite fast. Okay. That 225 grain bullet, which uh, is a popular hunting round, it's going 3,000 feet per second. The 250 grain bullet, it's a big boy, it's going 2,900 feet per second. So still pretty darn fast. You know, the 300 Weatherby, uh, I think it's a wonderful cartridge. But I think the 340 Weatherby really gets the most out of that big case. Uh, for instance, you can shoot a 200 grain 30 caliber bullet out of a 300 Weatherby and it's going almost 3,100 feet per second. So you're getting another 100 feet per second with this bigger bullet in that same casing. So some of you might be wondering, how does the 340 Weatherby compare to its competition? which I believe its main competition are three cartridges, which is the 338 Winchester Magnum, the 338 Rum, and the 338 Lapua Magnum. Uh, the 338 Winchester Magnum, very well known and a great cartridge. It's shooting that 225 grain bullet only 2,800 feet per second, while you know the 340 Weatherby shooting at 3,000 feet per second. Then we skip ahead to the 338 Remington Ultra Magnum, and it's saying it's around the same speed, which I think you could get a little more because it does have more case capacity than the 340 Weatherby. But uh, that 225 grain bullet, Hornaday is claiming around 3,000. I bet you could get 31. Then the big daddy of them all, the famous 338 Lapua Magnum. It's shooting a 225 grain bullet 3,100 feet per second. So it's about 100 feet per second faster than the 340 Weatherby. Also, I didn't want you guys to think that I forgot about this monster of a cartridge. I will talk about that in another video, but it is the king of the 338 Magnums. We'll just say that. Now, of course, I wanted to show you a ballistic chart with that 225 grain Hornaday uh, inner bond with a BC of 0.515, so pretty good ballistic coefficient. The muzzle velocity is 3,000 feet per second, which almost gives it 4,500 foot-pounds of energy, which is a lot. Just so you know, the 338 Wind Mag only has around 4,000 foot-pounds of energy, so this has well over 400 more foot-pounds. Now out to hunting distances, four or 500 yards, you got plenty of energy, okay? Let's just look at 500 yards. 
bullets going 2100, almost 50 feet per second. That energy, 2303. It's funny, that's about the same energy as a 6.5 Creed more out of the muzzle. So yeah, this thing has a lot of power. If you take a look at the top right with recoil, 41. So one of the downsides to this rifle, it's going to kick you, and it's going to kick hard. So why isn't this cartridge more popular? I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a good following from Weatherby fans because the thing performs well. But uh, it definitely lags behind in sales compared to the 338 Win Mag and probably even the 338 Lapua. So I think there's three reasons. All right. First... The thing kicks you hard, okay? It's about almost twice as much kick as a 30 6 Not quite, but almost. So that's a lot of kick. It's a lot of recoil. Second, Weatherby only offers this rifle in a Mark V right now. So it's not offered in their Vanguard series. And yeah, you can get this rifle as a custom rifle from other places, but that's most likely going to cost you more than a Mark V. So the cheapest you could get this rifle is probably around a thousand bucks. So it's a little bit expensive. Lastly, the ammunition is not cheap. It's going to be at least seventy bucks. And of course, if you reload, that will take down the cost, of course. But honestly. Someday, if I ever get the chance to go hunt in Alaska, and I needed a rifle that could take down a big brown bear or grizzly bear, this would be my choice. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you next time.